Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So here I am on the Retroid Pocket 3, and I'm streaming it to a local computer here at my house. And you've probably seen a similar setup to this before. There are a lot of apps that can do local game streaming. Some of the more popular are Moonlight and Steam Link. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you an app that's similar to those, but a little bit different too. This one is called Castor. And this app was developed by Black Seraph, who's known for making custom Android builds for a lot of retro handhelds. And it just released, so we're going to do a showcase and installation guide in this video here. Now, before we get started, I do want to take a second and just kind of explain what's going on with Castor in general. To start, you have like a typical PC like you see here. This is one of those really fancy ones that has an RTX whatever in it. Now, on this PC, you could run PC. PC games or do retro game emulation, things like that. And if you use an app like Moonlight or Steam Link, you can then actually screencast that over onto a retro handheld as well. And so this functions as a broadcast of your PC's screen over onto that handheld. Well, this new app Castor is a little bit different. In a nutshell, what it will do is create a virtual machine on your PC, which then can be used and accessed from that handheld. Meanwhile, the rest of your PC is open for use. So a scenario here would be like, for example, if you only had one computer in the house, but somebody else wanted to stream content onto their handheld. Here, they'll be able to stream it using Castor, while at the same time, the person using the PC can do whatever they want. Ultimately, they're sharing a little bit of the resources with the app so that the other person can make use of them. Similarly, that Castor image is treated like a completely different computer. And so, for example, you could do multiplayer between the PC and the handheld, where each of them are treated like their own PC. And so, this is not like split screen or couch co op gaming. This is literally one PC playing against the other. And so, yeah, the concept's a little bit complicated to wrap my head around, but all the same, it's a really neat idea. So, all the footage that you're seeing right here is me streaming streaming it from my PC, but at the same time, someone else could be using my PC for other tasks or games. And so at this point, you're probably thinking of all the neat use cases you could use in a scenario like this. And so with that in mind, let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, to get Castor working, you need two things. One is going to be a Windows-based PC, and the other is going to be an Android-based handheld. The Windows PC needs to be on either Windows 10 or 11 Pro. The home models do not have the features necessary for this virtualization setup. It also needs to be capable of VTD, which is Intel's version of virtualization. What that means is you're going to need a PC that's not like over 10 years old. And for now, the only devices you can stream Castor into are going to be Android-based handhelds. But the developer has plans for things like Mac and Windows and Linux, as well as iOS and Raspberry Pi. Now this app is in its initial kind of testing and beta phases right now, but eventually there will probably be a way to just directly purchase the app. For now, the way to access it is to become a patron for Black Seraph, the developer who made it. And so what you'll want to do is join that $10 tier, which will last for at least one month, and then you'll be able to grab the files from there. And a quick disclaimer here, I'm not getting any kickback or anything else like that, I just wanted to show off this cool app. Anyway, once you've downloaded it, you will have two apps inside. The first is called Castor, that's what's going to run on your Windows machine. And then Pollux is the name of the app that will run on your Android device. So to start, let's go ahead and install it on our Windows machine. We're going to right click here and then select Install. You may get a warning here about how Windows Defender doesn't know what it's looking at. Just go ahead and select Run anyway. After that, it's going to do the initial setup of Castor, and then you'll get another Windows security prompt here. Just go ahead and check all these blocks and then hit Allow Access. Now in the bottom right in your menu bar, you should now see that little orange Castor symbol. And so here is where we're going to create our virtual machine. All you have to do is click this and select Create Castor PC. It's going to do an initial hardware check to make sure you have the components necessary to run it. And like I mentioned, if you have Windows Home edition, you're going to have a bunch of errors here. Even still, you might get something here that says that the Hyper-V hypervisor needs to be installed. So that's super easy. All you have to do is close out of the installation wizard and then reboot your PC. It'll take care of the rest from there. So back on our PC here, we should be able to start this process all over again. We'll go into the task section and then create Castor PC, and it'll do that same hardware check, but as you can see now, it's saying that it is enabled. And so now we can set up our virtual environment for streaming. On the next window, you can select whichever GPU you want to use. Personally, I'm testing this PC right here, which has this 3060 laptop GPU. Next, we want to add our own host name as well as the username and password. For this, I'm just going to use Castor as my name, and then I can make up whatever username and password I want. 
And so next we're gonna define the resources we wanna to allocate to that virtual machine. So in my setup here, I'm allocating four of my 16 available cores, and then I'm also giving it 100% access to my GPU when it needs it. I'm also giving it half of my 16 gigs of RAM and 40 gigs of storage space altogether. In hindsight, I probably should have given it more space so I could have installed more robust games, so that's something to think about here. It's really gonna depend on how much spare space you have inside your computer. Either way, once you're happy with this setup, you can go ahead and press the install button. Now here it's gonna download a bunch of supporting files that you're gonna need in order to run Castor. And this one's gonna take a while, probably about 10 minutes. I think it's five gigabytes altogether. Anyway, after it's done downloading those files, it's now going to install the rest of the processes. And the components that make up Castor are actually a combination of different open source applications. The way I think about it is that the developer has taken all these different micro applications and put them together into one nice working product. Anyway, this will take another 5-10 minutes as well, but then it's going to be ready for use. Hey everyone, I'm doing the final edits right now, and I just realized I forgot to say that you need to do the next step, which is to actually turn on the Castor PC. To do that, you just go into the little task menu here on the bottom, and then click on the PC, and then you'll just press start. Anyway, from there, you can then go and start up the Android device, which we'll do in the next step. So, hello, and uh, let's move on to the next step. Now we need to put the Android app onto our machine. And there are several different ways you could do this. For example, you could take a USB cable, plug it into your Android device, and then plug that into the PC. From there, you could just transfer the file right over. Because I'm gonna be using this on multiple handhelds, I didn't wanna do that a bunch of times, so instead, I just put it on my Google Drive. And then I could just access my Google Drive from my Android handheld and then install it this way. And the app that Castor uses is actually just a fork of Moonlight with a couple additional features. And so it's gonna look and behave exactly like Moonlight if you've used that before. Now with any luck, if you have Castor already running on that Windows device, when you open up the Moonlight app, it should automatically detect it. If it doesn't, you'll have to manually search for the IP address, and Black Seraf has a video that shows you how to do that on his Patreon page. Next, in order to pair it, you're going to need to use a pin on the PC, so make note of the pin that it shows on your device. Now, back on Windows, we're going to go back to that Castor app, and we're going to find our virtual machine, which is Castor 1, and then we're going to click Pair. You're likely going to get an error here about the connection not being private. Just hit Advanced and then Proceed. Now it's going to also ask you to make a username and password. This one is independent of the one we already made before. So I'm going to use the username of Sunshine and then make my own password. Once you have that set up, it's going to refresh the page and ask you to then enter the username and password you just created. After that's done, we're now into Sunshine, which is the Windows companion for Moonlight. We can now go into Pin and then enter our Pin right here. And that's it. We've now paired with our Android device and our PC. This only has to be done that one first time. After it's been paired, you'll see options to either open up the desktop or Steam from that virtual PC. Now this virtual PC is a brand new image, which means it's not even going to have Steam installed. So the only option at first is to go into the desktop. And so yeah, as you can see here, this is a fresh version of Windows, independent of the Windows that we paired on initially. Now at first, touchscreen will not work, but once you've installed Steam, it will. And so let's do just a really quick setup to get things going. I'm going to take a USB dongle here, plug it in so that I can get a mouse going. And so as we look here in the hard drive, you can see it has 40 gigs of space, which is what I allocated when I first set it up. And 17 of those gigs are already used by Windows. And so if you want to install and play PC games that are a little bit more robust, you may want to give it more than 40 gigs like I did. Either way, I decided to move on from the mouse and actually just use this little trackpad and keyboard here so I can actually type. I'm going to go to a website called Ninite, which allows you to install multiple apps at once. And so here I can install things like Chrome and Steam and 7-Zip. And this is a super simple process, so I won't bore you with the details. Either way, once all that's done, you now have Steam up and running on this virtual environment. From here, you can log into your Steam account, start downloading games, and then start playing them directly on the device. For this, I would recommend using the big picture mode, that way you can use the controller to navigate around. And yeah, everything works really well right out of the box. So I'm just gonna go ahead and download a bunch of lightweight titles because I'm limited by my storage space. But even so, I downloaded about half a dozen games, and so let's start testing them out real quick. And yeah, this works just like any other kind of local streaming app, other than the fact that it's now working on an environment that's not disrupting your Windows PC. It was kind of cool to watch myself play Celeste on this virtual environment on the PC, but then also when I looked at my actual Windows machine, for all intents and purposes, it looked like it 
wasn't doing anything. And so I could use the rest of my Windows PC to do things like my taxes or watch Netflix, whatever you want to do. Now one thing I was curious about was what kind of resources were being used within my setup. And so while I was playing games, I also pulled up the resource monitor and this is what I saw here. So in general, I was seeing about 30% of my CPU was being used at any given time. And there was a little bit of activity when it came to disk writing, but only about a megabit a second. The network would spike here and there, but overall it wasn't really taking a lot of resources either. Now bear in mind, my Windows machine is sitting idle right now. And so for example, if you were to play something like Crisis on the other end, it may start to disrupt your stream. But either way, this is kind of the beauty of the project. You can have somebody else streaming to their local device while you can continue to use your PC like nothing was happening. If you were to use an app like Moonlight or Steam Link, you can't do anything other than just watch them play on your screen. And like I mentioned before, you could also use this in a multiplayer environment. So here back on my Windows PC, I started up this free to play game called Brawlhalla. I've never played it before, but it looks like Super Smash Brothers. Either way, I'm using my Onions Are Gross Steam account right here, and then I also made a Retro Game Core Steam account, which I've logged into on my virtual machine with the Retroid Pocket 3. And so now I've set it up so that I'm playing a multiplayer game here. One computer is the Retroid Pocket 3 and the other computer is my Windows PC. But of course, in reality, these are both playing on the Windows PC, but Steam thinks these are two different computers on the same network. And like I mentioned in the intro, this is not split screen co-op, like you're not playing on the same screen. These are two different computers connecting to each other. And so if you and somebody else in your house wanted to play a game together, but didn't want to do the whole split screen thing, this is how you could do it with only one computer. And so yeah, I think this is one of the coolest ideas about Castor in the first place, is that it basically functions like two PCs in one. Another idea is that you could use a Windows-based handheld and then stream that to another handheld as well. So for example, if you had something like the iNeo Air Pro, you could set up a virtual machine inside of that and then connect an Android device to that virtual machine and then two different handhelds could play a multiplayer game. Not only that, once you have this set up on one PC, you'll be able to use this on multiple Android devices. For example, all I've done here is I've installed Pollux onto my Odin Pro. And so now I can connect to that same Castor image from my Windows PC. And of course, because we're accessing that same virtual environment, all those games that we had previously installed are now available on the Odin as well. And so if you have multiple Android devices in the house, this is another use case here. Anyway, I think we should probably end the video now before I get even further into this rabbit hole, but I think you're going to find this is a pretty cool concept. I've always been a big fan of streaming from a PC onto a handheld because I think it gives you access to games that you wouldn't normally get to play. But I think that Castor brings it to a whole different level because it adds just another layer of functionality. I love the idea of multiple people using one shared resource to get the most out of it, and Castor does that really well. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Are there other use cases that I didn't think of that would work really well with Castor as well? And if you're interested in checking this out, I'll have links to the Patreon page for Black Seraph in my video description. As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.